they got him, they Ruvain had great herds and flocks, and they needed grazing land, and they come to Moshe requesting to stay on the trans Jordan side of the Yardin, not to cross over. And Moshe immediately suspected that this may be a repeat of what happened 40 years prior to this. <clears throat> Out of fear, they're afraid to cross over, to be confronted with the kingdoms of Canaan. So they clarified their position, said no, we're willing to go fight with our brothers, and we'll leave our families, and we will stay for the seven years of conquest, seven years of dividing, and then we'll return. And Moshe consults with Hashem, and Hashem says, it's okay. That as long as they keep their condition, the terms of the condition are kept, the trans side will be theirs. But what was the impetus to all this? The Torah tells us because of Mikna Rav they Ruv, and they got Otsumo, they had awesome amounts of cattle and sheep, flocks and herds. Now, why initially would, was Moshe suspect that this is a repeat of what happened 40 years ago? It was out of fear. Because the question is, going to Teretz Yisrael, which is Eretz HaKadosha, it's a whole different dimension of reality. How do you exchange that for monetary? How, how do you do such a thing? I would say you have flocks. So your flocks will have less grazing land. You'll have less flocks. What difference does it make? So evidently Moshe, the only thing he could have thought of, not to suspect them, it's because they're afraid to go cross the Jordan to fight against the Canaani, that they're afraid. As the, originally they said, it's a land that the virus its inhabitants, it's a land of giants. That's what they were concerned about. So they went and they clarified the position. Meaning, no, it's the, it's the finances, it's our wealth. We want to maintain that, and the only way we're able to maintain it is on the trans side because there's tremendous grazing lands. Meaning, they valued their wealth more than they valued Eretz Yisrael, and that's the way they would not cross. There's a Midrash, Midrash, Tantchuma, this week's Parsha. The Midrash says, Yilamdeinu Rabbeinu, how many gifts were created in this world? The three gifts that Hashem created in this world. Chochma, wisdom, gvura, power, strength, the ocean wealth. Any one of these three gifts, a person merits to have them, you've taken the best of the world. A Mosai, but when is that? That is, if they're God-given. And it comes as a result of God's power. God endows you with every one, each one of these gifts. But if a person goes and takes it himself, and it's all as a result of the person's own initiative, she came, Oma Shlomo, quotes a posuk, Nikolaus, and it goes to continue, and it explains. Shnei Gigorim, then it says, Ushneim of the Minol, Shnei Ashirim of the Bo, the two of the richest people who were richest commoners ever lived, Echod mi Yisrael, Echod mi Yisrael, one was a Jew, one was a Gentile, Korach mi Yisrael, Vahoman mi Yisrael, Haman was the richest, Commoner, he wasn't royalty. Ushnem of the Minolim, they were both destroyed. Lama, Lefishalohi of Matnosa, Nerakosh Baruch Hu, because it was not God given, they, something they took themselves. Eloyachotvin Osan Lohem, they grabbed it. Rechenad Hamotse, and they were proven they God. Shoy Ashirim Harbe, they were phenomenally wealthy. Oyle Mikna Godol, the Chivus Amonam, and they endeared, were endeared to their money. The Yoshua them Chutz Loritz, and as a result that they chose to stay in Chutz Loritz. That's why they were exiled. 
by they were the, they were exiled. The first ones, Shalem Aviagleim Ruveni Lagodi Chatsi Shevet Am Nashe Umi Goram Lohem. What was the cause why they were exiled first? Al Shefrishu Atzmi Nachei Bishul Mekneim. Of course, they separated themselves from their brothers as a result of what of their flocks of their livestock. Umi Nayin Shekaru Binyan Binyan Umi Kerav Hoy Legur Goru Bnei Ruven. So what was the impetus? What were what? Precipitated all this is they valued their money more than they valued to be with other Jews and be near to Israel. As a result of that, ultimately they were the first ones to be eg- exiled, and it was all taken from them. Why? Because chotfu, they grabbed it. It wasn't God given. They took it. A person could, could take certain levels of initiative, take something that it, that's not rightfully for him. So here it's interesting. The Balaturim of this pasuk says in the parsha. But they go to Bnei Ruven, I mentioned eight times. And he cites a posuk that Shlomo says in, in Mishlei, says, Shoma nachlam vuheles berishona b'achri shalosimorach. A portion which is, comes like with bewilderment. Initially, ultimately, it's a bare blessing. So the word vuheles, the ksiv is with ches. The kri, the, it's, the way it's read is vuheles, beholo. But it's spelled with a ches, vuchelis ksiv ches. Beshu ches poamim, shu huskral machlosim likach kushonim. Because it's mentioned eight times in the parsha that they want to take this pers- portion before they cross, cross the Jordan. Therefore, achrisalo tavorach. Ultimately, they will not be blessed. Shegolu ches shonim. They were exiled eight years, kotu b'shashvotim. Before they, the rest of the shvotim were exiled, they were exiled eight times. Eight, eight years prior, and that's what it corresponds to the eight times they mentioned in the parsha regarding wanting to take the portion before they cross the Jordan. Now it's interesting. We know the ches always within the spiritual realm is what lemalaminateva. That's supernatural. Their level of desire for the money, rather than investing it in the spirituality of themselves to be with their brothers, they valued their money, the material, as they would value. The spiritual. Therefore, it's vucheles. It's eight times to show to what the degree that they revere and esteem the, one, the money. And therefore, as a result of this, they failed and ultimately they went into exile eight years before the rest of the colonies. Right? <laughs>